tell you a funny story. We went to we first went to Rio in June 2013. We had one of those global ethical dialogues with experts. It was kind of hilarious in retrospect because we got them around the table. I make I don't mean to satirize them. They're very wise and able people, and we talked about corruption. And they all said, well, there is a culture of corruption in Brazil, but there's nothing you can do about it because basically the Brazilian public basically accepts that everybody's on the take. So the, the political culture of corruption is undergirded by a public culture of acceptance. Well, that was fine. We listened to that. And then I began to look out the window. And out the window, first there was about 10 people carrying Brazilian flags, and then there were 100 and then, we're, then there were 1,000, and then there were 10,000 people in the street. And so I said, what's going on, folks? We better get out there and take a look. That was the beginning of the million-person demonstrations against corruption in Brazil. So the experts told you one thing, and the people were telling you another. I am, I am a dyed-in-the-wool, convinced and proud intellectual. I will not traffic in anti-intellectual populism of any kind. But let's be frank, sometimes the experts get these things wrong. Here is a dramatic example of where we follow those demonstrations for three or four days and began to set, get a sense of the visceral fury of the Brazilian public about the corruption issue that the experts hadn't uh, seen. It was visceral fury that also ended in uh, very strong amounts of uh, violence that smashed uh, cash machines. We then um, looked at the relationship between uh, corruption and moral order. When you ask yourself, why are these people in the street? Corruption, I think, affected Brazilian citizens as humiliation. The connection between corruption and humiliation is not well understood. Over and over and over, people said to me, how stupid do they think we are, right? They're stealing and we, they think we don't care. That's what I mean by uh, corruption as humiliation. Let me also show you another place we went because we went away from the experts to a wonderful place called Favela Santa Marta. Favela Santa Marta is a thriving, extremely poor community perched on the hillside of uh, Rio de Janeiro. It has been beset by drug gangs. It has been beset by violence. But it has been the source of an, a very important experiment in policing, in which the police basically reconquered the favela uh, over a period of a couple of years and reestablished order. Why was this interesting to us? Because it allowed us to see the relationship between the rule of law and the moral operating systems of poor societies. It became very clear looking in Santa Marta that if you can have minimally fair policing, i.e. policing where they don't shoot you because of their, your race, and they kind of try and arrest somebody when a crime is committed, minimal standards of rule of law, moral order can rebuild in a place like the favela, and we saw it being rebuilt all around us. What am I looking at? I'm looking at mothers leaving their kids with a neighbor I'm looking at uh, people looking after their, uh, their elderly relatives. I'm looking at churches beginning to function. The molecular creation order in extremely poor communities, but absolutely dependent on the rule of law, dependent on uh, uh, the police. And we saw that uh, going on. Mm -hmm.